where I slept last night, right here on the floor of the cave. It was about 58 degrees in the cave last night, and of course it's about 58 degrees all the time in the cave uh, at this location probably. Uh, may vary within a few degrees throughout the year, but that's the beauty of being underground. Uh, very constant temperature. Um, I did make it through the night. Uh, it was a comfortable night. After the strange sound that we heard before going to bed at about 1.30 a.m., we don't know what it was. Uh, two cave explorers came walking through camp probably about 20 minutes after that sound, so I kind of wonder if it was something they did deep in the cave, maybe when they were slogging through the creek. But it almost seemed like it came from the other direction, so it could have echoed, it could have been something outside, maybe a uh, gust of wind blowing into the mouth of the cave with extreme force created a weird reverberation. Um, maybe 5,000 bats decided to drop off the ceiling at the same time and head whooshing out of the cave somewhere where we didn't see the bats. Because I mean, when we came in, we only saw four or five bats. Um, and then right after we laid down, we had, I don't know, five or six bats over this way, flying around, squeaking at each other. But after that, it was an uneventful, very quiet night with the drip constant in the background. Now look over here, something interesting. A railroad spike. I have no idea how long that's been there, but it's pretty old, I'm sure. And it'll probably be there forever. I can't remove it. I would if I could. But just interesting to wonder why in the world that spike would be there. Maybe someone hung their belongings from it, afraid of cave bears. I don't know. But there was a camp here before us. You can see the fire scar on the ground, and there's bits of charcoal. But the odd thing is there's only bits of charcoal. There's not a pile of charcoal as if they had a, real, a fire. Maybe someone came in and cleaned it up, but just leaving tiny bits of charcoal around. And then there's this speleotherm, or cave formation. Why is it laying here like a sarcophagus? When it should be over there, hanging on the wall or ceiling. Could someone have broken it off and drug it over here for some reason? Obviously, you can see where it was attached to the ceiling. My thought is it was broken off and then someone was going to pack it out in pieces maybe or try to pack the whole thing out. I don't know how. Maybe, I mean, I know that they used to bring beasts of burden into the cave to haul out um, speleotherms that they would use for uh, gravestones and such back in the 1800s. But that's a big one. I guess we'll never know. I happened to notice on the wall some writing and after staring at it long enough it came into focus and it reads, the party of the year, 3-23-1975. That's pretty amazing. And if you look on the ground just below that, appears to be a broken Budweiser bottle. Now, is that thrown here in 1975? There's bits of glass all around, and the more I look, the more I see more fire scars. There's another one here. So that's two, at least. So you see how this garbage being these old uh, broken bottles and the paint on the wall stays for so long without degrading. So that's the reason why when you come into a cave you leave no trace. I was over here on the other side of the room checking out these speleotherms and they're very impressive. This is about 12 feet tall. Stalagmite covered in like a flowstone. 
But up here on the wall, you can see where other stalactites have been broken off at some point in the past by people coming in here to rob the cave of speleotherms that have taken thousands of years to form. Very sad. But over here on the wall, what I really want to show is this millipede. He spends his entire life in the dark. May not even have eyes. Now what is he looking for? Is he looking for fungus to eat? Very interesting creature. No more than an inch and a half in length. Wow, very cool. We got a little salamander here. I don't know what kind he is, but isn't he cool? Man, that's one cool little creature. I'm, I'm surprised we didn't step on him. We were just coming. A little golden salamander? No, he's not a. He's a. He's a. I think he's a cave species of some kind. Look how big his eyes are. Very cool salamander. Look at the size of his eyes. He's perfectly rounded now. hope. And he's got really big feet, so he can navigate these and cling on these walls. And look at the size of his toes. He's got really huge, wide toes. They're not wide. They're just very long. So he's not going to move. Very neat little salamander. Okay, just let him just sit there. Man, what a cool find. Oh, he's about to move. There he went. Sorry. Blew up. Oh, let's get this. Up he goes. Do an object. That's an object. Let him do his own thing. Don't want him to run now. Good, he's off the trail. Wow, what an awesome find. This is so cool. Let's It'd be let him cool just... if he went up this. He's Good. going right over into those speleotherms. In he probably knows this area. He's probably been here all his life. Watch him go up that. Now talk about a mountain climber. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. Look at him go. I'm going to switch my light angle. It's okay. Sure. Careful. Look at him just sit there. I don't know how high he can go up, but... He probably can. I mean, with his feet, and he's also sticky, so he just sticks to the ground. He sticks to the to the rock. Wow! Look at his throat moving. So cool. Oh, well, well, keep your light on in there. He had it right there. Well, oh, good. Okay, what's he gonna do? Very cool. 